in a moment, we'll get into introducing the idea of logistic regression and looking at that model. But before we do, just a quick reminder that models generally tend to be predictive or effect size. So predictive is where we want to build a model that's good at predicting the outcome. So in the context of that Fiji fertility data, it'd be building a model to try and predict, is a woman using contraceptives, yes or no? And what variables are good at predicting that? Effect size model is where we want to get an unbiased or um, less biased estimate of the effect of some variable x1 on the outcome while controlling for the effect of other variables. So we might want to know what effect does education have on contraceptive use and we'll adjust for other confounders. When we look at logistic regression, we're going to focus our discussion on estimating the effect of education on contraceptive use. We'll also look at how the equation can be used if we want to make a prediction, right, to estimate what is the probability of contraceptive use or not. But most of our discussion will revolve around estimating an effect size. Logistic regression, it's an often is a starting point when our outcome variable y of interest is a yes-no type variable, disease or not disease. In linear regression, we'd model, right, we'd have a y variable that was a numeric variable, and we'd model the mean of y as a function of the x's. In logistic regression, our y variable is yes, no, and we're going to model the probability that y equals 1. Okay, what's the probability of disease as a function of the x variables? Although it won't be a linear function that we use, and that's because um, our y variable is just a yes or no. So if you, if you think of trying to make a scatter plot of x versus y, when y takes on only values of 0 or 1, we can't really look at a, a scatter plot, so we're going to need to make some some minor changes there. We'll talk about what they are a little bit in concept, but we won't get too sidetracked by that as we really want to focus on the concepts and interpretations and use of the model, not kind of the nitty gritty details. So with logistic regression, we can think of the model expressed two ways. The first one there, the probability that y equals 1 given x. So we can think of trying to model what's the probability of disease, or in this case, What's the probability of using contraceptives? And we can work that out. The equation would be this logistic function over there, e to the b naught plus b1 x1 divided by 1 plus e to the b naught plus b1 x1. Again, let's not get too sidetracked by that equation for now. But let's just think of it conceptually. We can model what's the probability of the disease, or what's the probability of using contraceptives as some function of x variables. We can also think of this same equation here, the same model, as modeling what are the log of the odds of the disease as a linear function of the x's. Or what are the log of the odds of using contraceptives as a linear function right, of b0 plus b1 x1. In that Fiji fertility data, we saw that we calculated the odds ratio by hand previously, but using this um, two by two table approach, and we've would find that the odds ratio there was 0.911. Okay, and you can see this if you go back to the discussion where we're looking at um, attributable risk, risk ratio, and odds ratio. The odds ratio from that simple 2 by 2 table was 0.91. The odds of using contraceptives for a woman of high education is 0.91 times the odds of a woman of low education, or 9% lower. So here the interpretation would be that having a higher education means you're less likely to use contraceptives. Right, and we said this is a bias estimate. There's confounding factors we're not adjusting for. So we're going to build up to doing that. But before we do, let's just look at if we fit a logistic regression model to this exact same data, the equation we'd end up with is the log of the odds of using contraceptives are negative 0.7177 minus 0.0925 times the indicator if education is high. So that high education equals 1 if their education is high. It equals zero if it's not. So let's talk about this model, the interpretation of its coefficients, and so on. So here, again, this is just the model um, that we would get. Right? The log odds of using contraceptives is negative 0.7177 minus 0.0925 times x1. Again, x1 being the indicator of if they're high education, that equals one. If they're not, it equals zero. That intercept term there. Generically, remember this told us the y value when all x are 0. 
In this case, the y is the log odds of using contraceptives. So this negative 0.7177 tells us what are the log of the odds of using contraceptives when all x's are zero or when the woman is of low education. It's not necessarily that meaningful, but that's what its interpretation is. The second coefficient here, the negative 0.0925, x1 equals one if they have high education, zero if they have low education. If the woman's education is high, then the log odds of using contraceptives decreases by 0.0925. Now again, this isn't that meaningful to interpret on its own, right, to say that if a woman has high education, the log odds of her using contraceptives decreases by 0.0925, but what we'll see, and we won't get too stuck in the mathematical derivations of this, but what we'll see is that negative 0.0925 happens to be the log odds ratio. Okay, or if we exponentiate that, if we take e to the negative 0.0925, that's going to give us the odds ratio. We'll build up to doing that. The next few slides are going to go over talking about why that is the log odds ratio or how we get the odds ratio and so on. This is just to justify it. You don't need to fully understand or follow all the mathematics of getting there. If you do, it's going to help, but it's not necessary. Just a reminder of some properties of logs and exponents that, that we've learned. You would have learned this probably in late high school or early undergrad. But some of the properties that, that we make use of, and again, you're not going to be asked to calculate these by hand, so don't get too stuck on the calculations, but I'm going to show some stuff um, for the sake of understanding the concepts. The log of x over y can be written as the log of x minus the log of y. e to the x plus y can be written as e to the x times e to the y. The log of e to the power of x is x, and e to the log x is x. Right, so again, the log is the anti-exponent, or the exponent is the anti-log. Okay, just like you can think of subtraction is anti-addition, right? Or division is anti-multiplication. Okay, so let's spend a short amount of time trying to justify why that coefficient b1 is the log odds ratio, or when we exponentiate it, why we get an odds ratio. Just a quick reminder that negative 0.0925 tells us how do the log odds of using contraceptives change if a woman is of high education, or it's the log odds ratio. If we exponentiate that, if we take e to the negative 0.0925, that's going to give us 0.911. Okay, and again, that's the odds ratio we got from the simple 2 by 2 table analysis. If you wanted to calculate e to the negative 0.0925, you should be able to do this on any basic calculator. They often have a button e to the x. You can also do it on your phone. If you go into your phone's calculator, and turn it sideways, you get um, additional kind of buttons or functions for the calculator, and you'll see an e to the x there. Okay, so this will allow you to work with the exponent. Let's spend a moment going through why that b1 is the log odds ratio. This is just to, to justify that, okay, to give some justification for it. You don't need to completely follow the mathematics here. It's okay if you get lost along the way. We can start out by working with the log odds ratio, which is the log odds of using contraceptives given education is high divided by the odds of using contraceptives given the education is low. Then we're using the property log of x over y is the log of x minus the log of y. We can write this as the log odds of using contraceptives given education is high minus the log odds of using contraceptives given education is low. And remember, the logistic equation gave us the log odds given the x variables. So the log odds of using contraceptives given education is high can be worked out as negative 0.7177 minus 0.0925 times 1, right? the indicator for high education. And then we want to subtract from that the log odds of using contraceptives given education is low. And that negative 0 0.7177 minus 0 0.0925 times 0. Right Here we're saying the education is low. Okay, we can see if we work through all of that, all these terms are going to cancel out. We're going to end up with the log odds ratio being just that coefficient 
negative 0.0925. Okay, so that's the log odds ratio. And if we want to get the odds ratio, we can exponentiate that to get the 0.911. And again, um, I know it's quite difficult to follow where it's just talking about a slide and I'm not having a chance to write this out um, in person and explain it in a bit better detail than what I can do with a slide. But really, this was just to try and justify for you that that B1, that coefficient there, is the log odds ratio. If we exponentiate it, we get an odds ratio. For the assessment and for the understanding you want to take with you, really what you need to know is logistic regression is a way we can estimate odds ratios as we're trying to demonstrate here. You might be thinking about, well, why bother doing that, right? We got the odds ratio from a two by two table and looking at it through a logistic model seemed to be getting the exact same odds ratio in a much more complicated way. Um, and the reason that we're doing this is logistic regression can also incorporate other variables to adjust for, which you can't really do or you cannot do easily in that two by two table. If we want to look at relationship between education and contraceptive use, but control for whether or not they want more kids, that's going to be harder to do in the 2x2 two two table. So if we wanted to, to adjust for these other variables, we can't really do it easily in a 2x2 two two table. We're not really going to spend time on the kind of mathematical details, but just a reminder, in our first meeting we talked about the two-sample t-test, right, and how that can compare the mean of two groups, and then we saw we might need to adjust for other confounders. Right, we saw if we wanted to compare the mean lung capacity for smokers and non-smokers, we needed to account for their age in some way. And the two sample t-test cannot do this. What we saw was we could fit a linear regression model and we could use both the smoking and the age to estimate the FEV or lung capacity. And then we could get um, compare the mean lung capacity for smokers and non-smokers, but adjusted for the age. Okay, so that B1 coefficient in the case of simple linear regression, we thought could give us that difference in means, but adjusted for other variables. Okay, so the exact same idea here. We can fit a logistic regression model with many variables in it, and B1 is going to give us the log odds ratio. Okay, if we exponentiate that, E to the B1, it's going to give us the odds ratio, but adjusted for other variables. We're going to get into looking a bit at multiple linear regression models, and see how we can estimate the odds ratio adjusted for other variables. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.